Hello everyone, this is Dr. Prasad Pudhiyalam, continuing the class series on research methodology and intellectual property rights with a subject called 21 RMI 56, which is a common subject for all the fifth semester uh, students uh, of Vishesharaya Technological University, VTU, Belagavi, Karnataka. Okay, so I'm, what I'm doing, I'm uh, taking uh, topic wise, I'm giving uh, the framing question uh, based on uh, few selected topic of a module and uh, giving the revised blows uh, taxonomy level and the answer key is also given all these are uh, in this particular class i am covering this many portions acquisition of copyright to three step uh, uh, test okay so it uh, connects to the course outcome uh, that is co4 understanding the copyright laws and subject matters of copyright and designs Okay, so uh, to refer further, uh, I am referring this textbook which is given in the as the text referring textbook in the syllabus that is Engineering Research Methodology by Dipankar Dev. You can download it uh, from the internet cloud or can Google if you type the PDF form you will get. You can download it and you can refer it in time. Okay, so what I am covering here acquisition of copyright in India, uh, rights of the copyright owner, economic rights, moral rights which was also known as droid moral right of others before, paternity right, uh, then right against distortion or uh, mutilation of the original work or called as the integrity rights, then limitations of um, uh, copyrights for an owner, uh, limitations set uh, established under the international regime like uh, Bernay Convention, Rome Convention and uh, TRIPS agreements. Uh, then uh, the three step test to analyze the limitations. Okay, so a question is framed based on um, the uh, topics which I selected. Uh, describe how copyright is acquired in India, the rights granted to copyright owners and the limitations imposed under the international uh, legal framework. Okay, so it is CO4, course outcome connecting is 4, uh, level of question I framed as level 3 and it is a 10 mark question. Uh, this much uh, uh, key I have to include in that. Uh, then uh, I consider it as a 10 months question. Okay, so acquisition of uh, copyright in India. Acquisition of copyright in India, it uh, refers to the process through which the individual or entities gain legal protection for their original uh, creative work. Okay, so copyright protection, it's, it, it is actually automatic upon the creation of a work and no formal registration is actually required. But however, if you are registering the work with the copyright office, it provides additional benefits and evidence for the ownership. Then rights of the copyright owner. Copyright owner enjoys uh, a bundle of uh, exclusive rights, uh, which includes the economic as well as moral right and allows the owner or the author to control and use the dissemination of the creative work. So in that uh, economic work, uh, economic rights, uh, economic rights uh, they grant uh, uh, the copyright uh, owners an exclusive authority to reproduce their work, distribute the copies of their work, publish it, uh, pub uh, publicly perform their work, uh, communicate the work to the public uh, like uh, broadcasting it. Uh, or adapt or create uh, derivative work, uh, works based on their original work. Okay, so then moral uh, rights or uh, which is also called uh, droid moral right or simply moral right of authorship or also called as a paternity rights. Uh, it protects the creator by giving them the, this uh, right which I mentioned here. The right to say they created the work. Means if you say any work which is publicly available, the owner can say that this the particular work is mine. So they have the rights to say uh, that work is theirs. That is called attribution. Or the right to stop others from uh, putting their name on works they didn't create. Uh, it's called as false attribution. If somebody using our work and uh, uh, they're showing as their own, uh, then that is called a false attribution. So the author has the a moral right to oppose that also 
as, as well as the right to stop others from uh, changing their with work without permission uh, taking the work and simply changing the work uh, without permission if they alter it uh, that can also be questioned so these are the moral right uh, uh, for a copyright owner then uh, right against uh, the distortion or uh, which is called as uh, mutilation of the uh, original work or actually the integrity of uh, the integrity rights integrity rights uh, it's a, actually a subset of the moral right uh, which protect the originality and integrity of the work the copyright owner may uh, have the right to prevent any alteration or distortion or uh, uh, changes that is mutilation of their uh, work which could harm its reputation or the artistic value so imagine uh, uh, if you draw a picture a beautiful picture and it means a lot for you you love that picture that is your creation and uh, it somehow it got created and you loves that work now if someone uh, tries to change uh, or uh, they try to damage uh, that drawing your drawing in a way that it makes uh, it look bad or ruins its meanings because the one who draw he has his own imagination and its meaning is there so someone change trying to change its meaning or they try to look it bad uh, bad or uh, doing something like that then integrity rights will give you the power to stop them it's like uh, protecting the special or original quality of your uh, artwork from being uh, messed up with uh, uh, without your permission that is the right against or the called as uh, integrity rights now limitations um, copyright uh, uh, limitations are exceptions and uh, and restrictions on the exclusive rights of copyright owners means a uh, copyright owner has got not all the uh, uh, rights some of exceptions are there which is called as limitations that is actually framed or uh, made to uh, by viewing the um, public uh, as also also and some some special considerations some special cases also considered so these limitations will allow uh, the copyright uh, uh, copyrighted uh, uh, content or matter in a specific situation like uh, if i if if a person caught uh, a few lines from a book a textbook uh, which is patent uh, cop having copyright uh, books are having copyright not patent uh, patents are for uh, the innovative uh, ideas not ideas innovative products uh, are getting patented copyright is for the uh, text work uh, uh, copyright are the, for the artwork also okay okay so that uh, differentiation i will explain in uh, some other class okay so if uh, if you if one caught or take uh, one's work uh, some lines of a textbook for a school project to explain a school project or to mention that uh, project using a small part of or using uh, a yeah, small part of that uh, art is used or if uh, somebody using a small part of a uh, video or so song uh, for a for a uh, project work not for a uh, public uh, for just for entertainment and all for education purpose if they are using then uh, the, this limitations make sure that uh, the copyright does not uh, block everyone from enjoying uh, and using creative work in a reasonable way so that, that means we can use uh, small work because it will not uh, uh, damage their uh, reputation it will not uh, do any harm to their uh, artwork or whatever they their work in addition to that it gives more uh, value to their work okay so that is called the limitations now there are limitations set under the international uh, regime in internationally uh, that is the international copyright agreements uh, such as the uh, Bernay Convention, the Rome Convention, or uh, the TRIPS. Uh, TRIPS means the trade related uh, uh, aspects of uh, intellectual uh, uh, property rights, uh, trade related aspects of intellectual uh, property rights, uh, TRIPS, uh, TRIPS agreement, uh, which are established, uh, which are, which establishes a framework for copyright limitations and uh, the exceptions uh, that a member country must adhere to so not for one country the, those who are uh, under that uh, convention okay convention means it's actually uh, it's a, a formal agreement or a recent assembly of people who
who come together uh, to discuss and establish some common rules uh, some common practices or standards uh, and they will continue obeying that uh, uh, to some certain uh, uh, time period or if if specified otherwise it is ever ending uh, process they have to obey that one unless until uh, some uh, restriction came then again a uh, convention will be called and uh, the people will make it proper okay now this conventions one by one if you see the Bernay convention uh, the Bernay convention uh, it is for the protection of the literary as well as the artistic works which was established on the 9th September in 1886 in the place called Bernay that is in Switzerland it is one of the uh, earliest international uh, uh, treaties addressing the copyright uh, uh, protection then next one that is uh, rom convention rom convention it is for the protection of the performers uh, or the producers of uh, phonograms phonograms means uh, uh, the recording sound recording whether it is physical recording or using a, a digital uh, representation of sound um, especially the, the music recording we called as phonograms as well as broadcasting the organization uh, organizations it is primarily deals with uh, the neighboring uh, uh, rights rather than copyright it was adopted in uh, October 26 1961 in Rome that is in Italy the third one that is uh, TRIPS uh, trips uh, TRIPS uh, already know that TRIPS it is uh, trade related aspects of uh, intellectual property rights. Uh, okay, the, the agreement on the trade related aspects of intellectual property rights uh, it is a part of the, the World Trade Organization WTO that is World Trade Organization agreements. It was established in the January 1st in 1995 and uh, this uh, WTO was formed because of the uh, continuous uh, the Uruguay round of negotiations uh, which was focused on uh, the uh, setting international standards for various forms of intellectual property including copyright. The Uruguay round of uh, negotiation it is it's actually a series of uh, 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 from 1986 to 1994 this uh, happened this negotiation happened which is which was under the um, under the GAT TIGAT called the general agreement on tariff and uh, trade uh, that is uh, happened in Uruguay that's why it is called Uruguay negotiation so these negotiation it ultimately it led to, to the establishment of the world trade organization in the 1995 January 1st 1995 the WTO was was uh, established so the Uruguay rounds uh, it was uh, it is very significant uh, because it is created a milestone in international trade addressing various aspects of the trade uh, including the agricultural uh, textile uh, services uh, intellectual properties and dispute as well as the settlement of that continuation of uh, world trade organization we got the trips then next that the three step test uh, three step, uh, step test it is it's a framework which is used in uh, international copyright law to determine whether the limitations or exception to copyright is acceptable or not because already said uh, copyright when it is the not all uh, rights are there some limitations also there that we seen just now some of the uh, limitations we explained that is not to harm the owner or the, or the author but uh, to seeing the public as well as for the some uh, special considerations are there so these three step test it involves uh, uh, in evaluating whether the limitation it applies in special cases whether it is taken for a special cases which is actually good for some uh, other purpose like uh, its educational purpose if it is used it, it can be it, it can be considered it does not conflict with the normal exploitation of the work as well as it does not unreasonably prejudice the legitimate interest of a copyright owner so actually the three step test it helps ensure that copyright exceptions are fair they are limited and they are even balanced for example if i take uh, if uh, a law that allows 
the people to use i said that small part of a copyrighted book for educational purpose in school if you apply the three step test in the first case that is a special case so this is a special exceptional it is designed for the educational setting so it is making it very specific and it is not a general law so it's acceptable first stage it is acceptable no conflict with the normal exploitation if you consider using a small portion of that educational purpose it does not harm the regular sale or or the market for the book so it is a limited and specific use again so it will it actually it does not have actually it gives more value to that other the author who are having the copyright the third step uh, test in that no unreasonable prejudice so taking that small portion of that textbook for educational purpose it does not uh, unfairly harm the author's interest since it is for the educational benefit and uh, and uh, striking a reasonable balance is also there so that's about the three step test okay so that's about uh, this particular class video that is uh, considered as module 4 part 3 thank you very much for uh, watching my videos uh, uh, those who are uh, not yet subscribed to my youtube channel please do subscribe and support this i have to request because more the number of subscription more value to my work that is the value that you are giving to uh, my uh, work on this uh, class video okay so once again uh, 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 thank you very much my youtube channel name my intuition 4865 uh, have a nice day